Hello. Seven young maidens, three young men, escaped the bubonic plague by retreating to the hills above Florence. There to pass the time, they tell each other stories. And here we are on the first day. The first story has been told, and now it is time for the second story. Now, there's a, usually a bridge between each story um, that Boccaccio does. Boccaccio is rather long-winded, and so most of the time I will probably skip over him, but since this is kind of a short bridge, and the following story is also kind of a short story, eh, let's read it. Give you a sense of what it's like. Okay, so the first story's just finished. The ladies were full of praise for Panfilo's story, parts of which they had found highly amusing. Everyone had listened closely, and when it came to an end, Nifile, sitting next to Panfilo, was asked by the queen to continue the proceedings with a story of her own. Nifile, whose manners were no less striking than her beauty, replied with a smile that she would gladly do so and begin in this fashion. Now, by the way, the queen, um, basically everybody takes turns to kind of be the monarch of the day and direct the proceedings. She's not really a queen. So anyway, I just want to make sure you knew that. So here it comes. Penfilo has shown us in his tale that God's loving kindness is unaffected by our errors when they proceed from some cause which it is impossible for us to detect. And I, in mine prose, to, um, to demonstrate to you how this same loving kindness, by patiently enduring the shortcomings of those who in word and deed ought to be living witnesses, and yet behave in precisely the contrary fashion, gives us the proof of its unerring righteousness. My purpose being that of strengthening our conviction in what we believe. So, let's get started. As I once informed, as I once, as I was once informed, fair ladies, there lived in Paris a great merchant, a worthy man called Johanne de Chevigny, who was extremely honest and upright and ran a flourishing textile business. He was particularly friendly with an enormously rich Jew called Abraham, who was himself a merchant and an extremely upright and honest man. In view of Abraham's honesty and integrity, Jehone began to have serious regrets that the soul of so worthy, good, and wise a man should go to his perdition because it was lacking in proper faith. So he began in an amiable manner to urge him to abandon the erroneous ways of Judaism and embrace the true Christian faith, which being sound and holy was, as he could see for himself, steadily growing and prospering, whereas in contrast his own religion was manifestly declining and coming to naught. The Jew replied that he considered no faith to be sound and holy except the Jewish, and that he had been born into that one and meant to live and die in it. Nor was there anything that would shift him from his resolve. This reply did not, however, determine Jehone. A few days later, from renewing his appeal and showing him in the sort of homespun language for which merchants have a natural bent on what grounds our faith was superior to the Jewish. And although Abraham was very learned in Jewish doctrine, nevertheless, either because of his great friendship with Jehone, or possibly because he was stirred by the words which the Holy Ghost put into the mouth of this ignoramus, he began to be highly entertained by Jehone's explanations. But his belief was unshaken and he would not allow himself to be converted. The more stubbornly, the more stubbornly he, revisited, he resisted, the more Johanne continued to pester him, until finally the Jew, overcome by such incessant importunity, said, Now listen, Johanne, you would like me to become a Christian, and I am prepared to do so on one condition, that first of all, I should go to Rome, and there observe the man whom you call the vicar of God on earth and examine his life and habits be, together with those of his fellow cardinals. And if they seem to me such that, added to your arguments, they lead, to me, uh, they lead me to conclusion that your faith is superior to mine as you have taken such pains to show me, then I shall do as I have promised. 
But if things should turn out differently, I shall remain a Jew, as I am at present. When Johanna heard this, he was thrown into a fit of gloom and said to himself, I have wasted my energies, which I felt I had used to good effect, thinking I had converted the man. For if he goes to the court of Rome and sees what foul and wicked lives the clergy lead, not only will he not become a Christian, but if he had already turned Christian, he would become a Jew again without fail. And turning to Abraham, he said, Come now, my friend, why should you want to put yourself to the endless trouble and expense involved in going all the way from here to Rome? Besides, for a rich man like yourself, the journey both by sea and land is full of dangers. Do you suppose you will not uh, find anyone here to baptize you? <laughs> if by chance you have any doubts concerning the faith, as I have outlined it to you, where else except Paris will you find greater and more learned exponents of Christian doctrine capable of answering your questions and resolving your difficulties? Even back then, in the 14th century, Paris was a major center for commerce, learning, philosophy, culture, and in many ways it had already eclipsed Rome. Why go all the way to Rome? Hence, in my opinion, this journey of yours is quite unnecessary. You must remember that the church dignitaries in Rome are no different from the ones you have seen and can still see here, except that they are the better for being closer to the chief shepherd. And so, if you will take my advice, you will save your energy for a pilgrimage on some later occasion, when perhaps I will keep you company. Johanne, <laughs> replied the Jew, I believe it to be just as you say it is. But to put the matter in a nutshell, if you really want me to do as you have urged me with so much insistence, I am fully prepared to go there. Otherwise, I shall do nothing about it. Go then, and good luck be with you, said Johanne, seeing that the Jew had made up his mind. He was quite certain Abraham would never become a Christian once he had seen the court of Rome. But since it would make no difference, he did not insist any further. The Jew mounted a horse and rode off with all possible speed to the court of Rome, where on his arrival he was warmly welcomed by his Jewish friends. And there he settled down without telling anybody why he had come, and cautiously began to observe the behavior of the Pope, the cardinals, the other and the other church dignitaries, and all the courtiers. Being very a very perceptive person, he discovered, by adding the evidence of his own eyes to the information given him by others, that practically all of them, from the highest to the lowest, were flagrantly given to the sin of lust. Not only of the natural variety, but also of the sodomistic, without the slightest display of shame or remorse. To the extent that the, powerful, that the power of prostitutes and young men to obtain the most enormous favors was virtually unlimited. In addition to this, he clearly saw that they were all gluttons, wine bibers, and drunkards without exception. And that next to their lust, they would rather attend to their bellies than to anything else, as though they were a pack of animals. Moreover, on closer inspection, he saw that they were such a collection of rapacious money grubbers that they were as ready to buy and sell human, that is to say, Christian blood, as they were to trade for profit in any kind of divine object, whether in the way of sacraments or of church living. In this activity, they had a bigger turnover and more brokers than you can find on any of the Paris markets, including that of the textile trade. They had applied the name of procuration to their unconcealed simony and that of sustentation to their gluttony, as if, to say nothing of the meaning of the words, God were ignorant of their intentions of their wicked minds and would allow himself to be deceived, as men are, by the mere names of things. All this, together with many other things of which it is more prudent to remain silent, was highly distasteful to the Jew, who was a sober and respectable man. And so feeling he had seen enough, he decided to return to Paris, which he did. On hearing of his arrival, Jehoné, thinking nothing to be less likely than that his friends should turn Christian, came to his house where they made a great fuss of each other 
And after Abraham had rested for a few days, Jehudai asked him what sort of an opinion he had formed about the Holy Father and the Cardinal and the other members of the papal court. Whereupon the Jew promptly replied, A bad one, <laughs> and, many, and may God deal harshly with the whole lot of them. And my reason for telling you so is that unless I formed the wrong impression, nobody there who was connected with the church seemed to be to me to display the slightest sign of holiness, piety, chastity, or rectitude, or any other virtue. On the contrary, it seemed to me that they were all so steeped in lust, greed, avarice, fraud, envy, pride, and other sins, and worse, if indeed that is possible, that I regard the place as a hotbed for diabolical rather than devotional activities. As far as I can judge, it seems to me that your pontiff and all the others too are doing their level best to reduce the Christian religion to naught and drive it from the face of the earth. Whereas they are, very, they are the very people who should be its foundation and support. But, since it is evident to me that their attempts are unavailing, and that your religion continues to grow in popularity and become more splendid and illustrious, I can only conclude that being, that being a, a more holy and genuine religious than any of the others, it deservedly has the Holy Ghost as its foundation and support. So, whereas earlier I stood firm and unyielding against your entreaties and refused to turn Christian, I now tell you quite plainly that nothing in the world could prevent me from becoming a Christian. Let us therefore go to the church where, in accordance with tr the traditional rite of your holy faith, you shall have me baptized. When Jehoneh, who was expecting precisely the opposite conclusion, heard him saying this, he was the happiest man that ever lived. And he went with him to Notre Dame de Paris and asked the clergy to baptize Abraham. This they did. As soon as they heard that he himself desired it, Jehoneh stood as his sponsor and gave him the name of John. And afterwards, he engaged the most learned teachers to instruct them thoroughly in our religion, which he quickly mastered, thereafter becoming a good and worthy man, holy in his ways. This is, in many ways, a piece ahead of its time. For one thing, you have a Jewish character who is a good, righteous, and honorable man. This is a time when Jews were portrayed as being devils and Christ killers, people who snatched Christian children and you know to perform blood sacrifices. This is a portrayal of Judaism and of Jews, which would be very, very, very much ahead of its time. Um, it also was a kind of a dangerous thing to, to print because Boccaccio was living in Italy, and although not all of Italy was under the control of the Pope or his army, it was still dangerous to criticize the church. This is still a hundred years before Martin Luther will nail his demands on the church wall and shatter the Catholic Church and split you know, the church between Catholic and Protestant. So, Boccaccio is coming out ahead of his time here, but even then, the church knew it was in trouble. The Christian world knew the church was in trouble, but yet, the fact that they had no faith in the clergy, or at least the court, you know, the clerical hierarchy, did not shatter the faith in Christianity. Remember, the church will split. People aren't going to walk away from Christianity. They are going to splinter and start their own churches. So, a little piece of um, literature for you. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, now, have a nice day if I can figure out how to stop this thing. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.